Change control. First point. Change control means we have a process to control the changes. No one is allowed to change anything without going through the process of the change requests. Many times, many, many times, I faced a situation where the developer added something to the scope of the requirements without telling anyone about it, just because he felt good about his addition, or maybe because we already have the code for it. Why not add it to the code? Usually the developer has good intentions of adding this change, but software can't be managed with intentions. We need to put a process for anyone to follow if they ever feel the need to change anything. Adding unnecessary feature is a common phenomenon known as a feature creep or scope creep. Feature creep happens for three reasons. One, we're not used to saying no to important users, so all users' demands end up in the product. Two, we tend to add all the features found in the competitor products. I've fallen for this trap myself in my early years, and I ended up releasing the product very late. Three, the product tries to support both experienced and inexperienced users. So, we may end up with two ways to implement the same functionality. Feature creep should be controlled using change control management system we mentioned earlier. The bigger the system, the more control and formal the change control system should be. The process of change control is generally performed as a series of steps. Usually the process starts by documenting the request. We ask the customer to please write down whatever she wants to change. And oh man, many times the customer often drops the change just because she doesn't feel like writing anything. They can quickly request a change as long as they can easily ask for it verbally. But if it requires her to write it down, she will say, okay, I will give it another thought. Usually, they'll never talk about it again. This is a huge plus for us. Many customers just request the changes for the sake of getting the whole development team to knock their heads off talking about the new change request. Many customers, unfortunately, think they can ask for anything whether they need it or not, as long as they are paying us money. But when it comes to doing just an extra step like documenting the request, they will think twice before asking for it. Now, the customer or whoever has the need for the change documents the change request in an email or a forum, or better yet, a database system that holds all the requests. The project management then evaluates the request from the point of view if it is with or against the project objectives. If the request is way beyond the project objectives, then the project manager can reject the request right away. Years ago, I once had a customer asking to add support for cloud computing for an inventory system just because he heard that cloud computing is good. Also, once a developer asked to add a button to a web page just because he had the code ready, those kinds of changes are the ones that delay the release delivery date without us even knowing what's going on. Let me stop here for a moment. Some of you might ask, what's the problem with giving the customer an extra feature without asking for it, especially if we already have the code for it? Well, give it a thought. Now, you have such a button on the web page, and the customer is happy with the freebie. Suppose there is a bug for some reason in that button. You'll have to fix it, and if the button appears in the future, you'll have to maintain it. And if the customer gets a freebie in this project, so why not ask for more freebies in the future? Unsurprisingly, once a customer asked me to get rid of that freebie and refund him some money instead. His argument was, I paid for your time and you wasted that time in implementing that freebie. So save my time and give me back the cost of that freebie time instead. Wow. That was shocking. Back to our change control system. Suppose the change is legitimate from the project manager's point of view. Then the change request should go through a group of people to evaluate the request. This group is usually called change control board or CCB and some companies call them configuration control board. This group is formed by the project manager, usually at the beginning of the project. It consists of selected members from the stakeholders. This group should have the knowledge to evaluate the change and are responsible for either approving it or rejecting it. 
The CCB has the collective responsibility and authority to review and approve functional change requests, CRs. The group is selected to assess and approve modifications to the system, representing different views within the organization. As a project manager myself, my CCB would consist of the team leader because he understands the technicality of the software, the quality manager because he understands the quality aspects of the software, the customer himself because he understands the business domain, and of course myself as a project manager as I understand the cost and schedule aspects of the software. Those are at least four members who need to meet to discuss the change request together. Sometimes a change is acceptable from the business perspective but would affect the schedule. In one of my projects, the customer asked for a change. The change would take one day for the developer to implement, so the project manager was okay with the change. However, the quality manager said she would need months to test such change because she would have to do regression testing to everything from scratch. So we rejected the request. That's why we need to ask all the knowledgeable involved people. Of course, sometimes we might need to add extra people like the developer who is currently implementing the feature or the graphic designer or the technical writer when needed. We should answer the questions. Does this feature support the overall system's objective? Does this feature really add anything new or is it simply an alternative way of doing something already supported? Is this feature likely to be important to and be used by most software users? Can this feature be implemented by extending an existing feature rather than adding another feature to the system? Does this feature provide general functionality or is it a very specific feature? After the CBB approves the change request, the project manager updates the project plan to implement the change. After the change request implementation and testing, the stakeholder should review the change. If the customer is satisfied that the change has been successfully implemented, the request should be closed. On a final note, the change control process doesn't need to be implemented as is from day one of your project. At the early stages of the project, you should expect many change requests. Therefore, a rigid process would slow everyone down. So it's only recommended to notify the stakeholders of your changes. During project implementation, you can put your change control plan into action. During the later stages of the project, you can tighten your change request process by adding an extra gate before submitting a change request and maybe asking for extra permission for more than one key stakeholder to submit and consider the change request.